there's been a lot of repetition, and I'll, I'll try not to repeat, I'll call it reinforcement, which that's a learning technique. Okay, so this is where I'm at. I'm inside the Beltway in uh, Bethesda. We have a hospital uh, there called the Clinical Center. Um, to reiterate, uh, with syringomyelia, uh, it's about one per 10,000 people. So if you're a town, in a town of 10,000 people, you, you're, you're probably the one that has it. Usually it presents between 20 and 50, but I think the pediatric neurosurgeons are taking some of the people before they're getting to adulthood now. Um, most of the patients have Chiari. Some have basilar invagination, as Dr. Menezes was talking about yesterday. Uh, some have arachnoiditis, we just talked about that, and some have spinal tumors. You've seen this slide before, but let me just show you. Um, the, the, you have the cyst in the spinal cord, and what it does, it affects what's called the gray matter, and those are the nerves, the, the central parts of the nerves, and the nerves go out to the arms. And so the, these nerves move the arm muscles. And so that's why you're weak with syringomyelia when the syrinx affects the gray matter. As the syrinx gets larger, it affects these white matter tracts. That's when you get spasticity. That's when your legs get very stiff. And we'll be talking about the syrinx distending the spinal cord. If the syrinx is fat, it distends the spinal cord, and it has its effect. If it's just here, you don't really get the effect of the spinal cord being stretched because this is after you know, after the person's died. But in life, the syrinx is distended, and that pressure is thought to uh, cause some of the effects of syringomyelia, the long-term effects. So let, uh, let me let you into the doctor's inner sanctum here. Um, when we see somebody with syringomyelia, we want to assess neurologic function. So we get a history. Are you describing pain, weakness, numbness, walking problems? And the time course is very important. Are they progressive symptoms or are they stable symptoms? If things aren't changing, we think, well, you know, why, why change something? Because treatment really doesn't usually make things better. It just keeps things from getting worse. So if somebody's been stable for many years, usually we don't upset the apple cart. And then we, on the examination, we validate what's been told to us in symptoms, and we see, well, how weak are you? How much sensation have you lost, and where is it located? Are you unstable walking? What's your disability from this condition? And then we assess the anatomical structures. We do radiology. And, and people have shown you a lot of MRIs, but that's the, the next step. We want to look for anatomical deformities of the brain, such as hydrocephalus. Those are the large ventricles, too much fluid. Chiari-1 malformation, narrowing of the spinal fluid pathways, syringomyelia, spinal deformity, tethered cord. That handles most of the things. And we're really looking, if there is a syrinx, does it distend the spinal cord? In other words, is the spinal cord fatter where the syrinx is compared to adjacent parts of the spinal cord that don't have a syrinx? And if you suspect that previous surgery or something else has made the spine weak, we do special studies of the spine to see if there's weakness and if a fusion needs to be done. All right, so this is what we look at with the MRI. We, is there any space between, these are the tonsils, is there any space here? Um, is there a syrinx? And how far down the tonsils are? But see, it's, it really doesn't matter how far down they are. It's just this plugging, just like a cork in a bottle, if it's tight, that can have the effect if the tonsils are down three millimeters or if the tonsils are down 20 millimeters. It can have the same effect. All right, so who do we recommend treatment for? Patients with worsening signs and symptoms. Syrinxes that expand the spinal cord. Usually syrinxes associated with a Chiari malformation and syrinxes with a spinal lesion that obstructs the CSF pathways. Of course, if somebody's 70 years old, and they've been stable for 40 years and they have a Chiari malformation, we probably wouldn't suggest surgery because they're pretty much telling us, hey, I've done this well for 40 years. It's probably not going to change. Now, non-surgical treatment is recommended for patients with lack of progression of syringomyelia symptoms over a long period, syrinxes that don't expand the spinal cord, and central syrinxes with tapered ends, fusiform, some people call these 
they don't even call them syrinxes, but they come from the radiologists with the diagnosis of, of uh, syrinxes. So let's call them syrinxes. Other people would call them enlarged central canals. And, and any syrinx is not related to a condition that narrows CSF pathways. You do all the evaluation, there's a syrinx there, it doesn't really expand the spinal cord, but there's no block uh, from a deformity and there's no Chiari malformation. Usually we don't do surgery on them. People have trouble understanding this. Most conditions, you break your leg, you have a cast, your, your fracture heals, you're okay. But in syringomyelia, it's a little bit different because the injuries to the spinal cord. So your treatment's considered successful when symptoms and signs remain stable or improve, but usually incomplete, not completely, after starting treatment. But why do we do surgery then? Well, spinal cord damage from syringomyelia is irreversible, so you wanna do surgery as early as possible if you're going to do surgery to prevent further spinal cord damage and other medical problems. All right, so let's talk about failure. Well, failure is the opposite of success. Uh, so you do surgery and your neurologic deficits such as weakness and sensory loss become more severe after surgery. So that's the clinical part. And then the radiographic part is the syrinx is the same or greater size and it's still distended, the spinal cord is still expanded. All right, so if you have Chiari and syringomyelia you're, and you have successful surgery, your headaches are, re, are relieved. If you had unstable walking, that sh should be improved. If, if you had swallowing problems, that should be improved. If you had a central sleep apnea, that can, that can be permanent.